ನಮೋಟಸ್ಸ ಭಗವತು ಅರ್ಹತು ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುಸ್ಸ ಹೊಮೇಸ್ ಟು ದ ಟ್ರಿಪಲ್ ಜೆಮ್ ಹೊಮೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಹೋಲಿ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಬಡಬಂತಿ ಹೊಮೇಸ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಗುರು ಬಂತಿಜಿ ಅವರ್ ಆಬಟ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಬೆನಬಲ್ ಕಸಪ್ಪ ಬಂತಿ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅನಂದ್ ಬಂತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಹೋಲಿ ಸಂಘ ಡಿಯರ್ ಉಪಾಸಕಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಉಪಾಸಿಕಾಸ್ a very happy and peaceful meaningful new year to all of you <clears throat> you just have practiced meditation and make your mind more peaceful before the meditation you also listen to the chantings when you listen the chantings your mind gates confidence you have sadha in your mind you have strength in the mind you have uh, peacefulness in the mind and when you are meditating you are enjoying the bhavana you're cultivating your own mind and now when you listen to the dhamma it is another act of merit to get punya another act of merit to multiply your punya it is another act to strengthen our paramis all this while on every sunday since last years maybe if you calculate four sundays into 12 whole year you have been listening to the dhamma these dhamma danas are being organized and offered from us during barabhantes time and you don't miss even one of them some of you who come very regularly to attend this sunday dhamma desana and this is a merit the listener also get punya the giver also get punya so when you are entering you are in a new year and you have by gone you left the last year what you have to contemplate you have to really think that how much dana parami have i ac- accumulated how much sila have i perfected in last year how many times i sat meditation how many days in my life in one year i have committed for meditation to giving time for myself how much sacrifice and renunciation i have made by coming to the vihara it is also a renunciation because you have to literally give your time you have to sacrifice you have to put forth your efforts to come here how much time we spend for giving our metta to our loved ones how much time we have for compassion to us being kind being kindful to oneself be kindful to others who are in need of you when you contemplate like that then you will see that there are still a lot of things to be accumulated a lot of things to be perfected so buddha said that all these actions need your effort without right effort you cannot accumulate goodness you see when you say goodness why goodness goodness is the another form of happiness when you say a person is happy that means he has lot of punya within him the person who get often habitually he does punya karma he is a happy person so but this is happiness and punya is both are synonymous they are same you are growing in punya growing in goodness that means you are growing in happiness so the first point how much goodness you have made and how much sila you have perfected how much meditation how many times a day you sit for cultivating your mind for giving your mind a chance to get all the positive qualities a happy mind a peaceful mind can lead us to positive thoughts wholesome noble thoughts and then this mind when it is cultivated 
it leads us to wisdom. So when you say new year and what you have to do in this new year, how much effort you have to put? There are four different kinds of effort. The first effort is called samvara. That means you have to restrain yourself. You have to control your action, your speech and mind, and refraining yourself for not committing any unwholesome actions. That is called samvara. Samvara is the first kind of effort, you see. To doing goodness, you need effort. You need right kind of effort, a balanced kind of effort. Anything you want, any, any wealth or prosperity which you may aspire for, you have to put forth right effort. Without effort, forget about your material prosperity and what to talk about the spiritual growth. Sangvara is very important. You have to restrain yourself for not committing any unwholesome actions, right? You have to be very mindful when you are meditating because you don't allow any unwholesome thoughts from the mind. You would let them go, right? So the next step of right effort comes as pahana, which is giving up. Whatever evil negativities you have already developed, you have already conditioned, you know. You just have to remove them. A removal of these things needs right effort also. Pahana, that means you have to give up. You have to open up all the doors and let them go. From your greed, from your hatred, and from ignorance and all those defilements. And next step of right effort is called bhavana. That means you have to cultivate, accumulate, put forth your effort to habitually perform kushalas, more and more kushala, kushala dhamma. And when these kushalas are developed, then the next step is called maintaining. You have to maintain it. Sometimes, for example, you you are doing it, you are coming here regularly, but but some people they just come once in a while. They have they don't do it habitually. You see. Then if you don't do habitually then things, then it is not maintained. You are not maintaining that kushala has. Anything, anything. For our wealth also, you have to maintain it. You have to have a balance in a wealth. Balance, you have to save your money for your family. You have to save for the business, whatever um, enterprise you are doing, professions you are engaged. You have to have a, um, a portion of your savings for that. Then you should keep it for emergency and for performing dhanas, for making merits. That is how you... You balance, you maintain your wealth. Buddha says, Uttana Sampada, Arakha Sampada. That means you have to put forth efforts. And when you gain your wealth, you have to then use your skillfulness, use your wisdom to protect them. So these four ways of right efforts, we all need. The four ways of right efforts can lead you to goodness. They can lead you to perfect your paramis, you know. Then the right effort can lead you to right mindfulness. Now mindfulness is really another important quality you have to develop. Right? When I say dana, you know what is dana? Because our upasakas and upasikas you come here to the monasteries and you do dana. And sila, sila is something which is another wonderful qualities. You know, sila is good all the time. Like till the old days, for the children or adult, even to the older ones, everybody needs to follow the sila, the virtuous conduct. When you are in the sila, then you have harmony, harmony in the family, 
harmony in the society. Everywhere you can live happily. Then the bhavana, meditation. Now, some of our upasakas and even many of you, they regularly come here for learning and practicing meditation, anapanasati or metta. Then when the time comes, they also go to our meditation center. Right? We have a whole lot of course throughout the year. Then they take a slot and just go there and do practice bhavana. Bhavana is the foundation for gaining mindfulness. When you talk about sati, how that sati comes unless and until you do practice meditation. If you have a peaceful mind, a calm mind, then you have really concentration. When you have concentration, you have wisdom, then you can see the things as they are. Then you have more strength in that mind. So when a restless mind, you have, you have experienced throughout this last year, how much restlessness you faced, how much unwanted situations you have faced last year, how much things you have done with ignorance, with just stupidity, it could have been avoided. How much things you do with not giving any thoughts, not clearly knowing what is right, what is wrong. It just happened because of not meditation, because of not being mindful, to be precise, not being mindful. We commit unnecessary things and we entangle in own our actions. That is how this suffering comes from. So, bhavana is more important. And how do you do bhavana? Is like one sitting or two sittings or only on Sundays? No, you should do it every day. And subsequently, you make it a habit that every day, morning and evening, give some time for yourself. Give some time to meditate, for to be kindful to your own mind. Because all the time, you are giving enough food to the mind, which can really take away the mental peace and mental well-being. You have to take some time, give rest to the mind. Sati, so mindfulness of practice, it is very much important to all of us, to whether you are working at a profession, or you are a student, or you are a retired person, or you are a family person, everyone needs to be mindful. Why? to avoid suffering, to not to fall into problems. If you don't want problems, then you have to be mindful. There is no other way. We don't want problems. Nobody want problems. Nobody want greed, hatred or ignorance. But we don't know how to face them in your reality. So to facing them, you have to prepare every day. Just like you dress of yourself, just like you give food uh, to a body, nourish the body. Similarly, take some time, stick to the discipline, then you will see uh, what a different drastic change uh, in your own character, in your own life. So when your mind is peaceful, let's say you are moving on the road very fast, but you, you really cannot perceive anything there. Why? Because the speed is so, so much that you can't see any visual objects. But you slow down your pace, then you can see very clearly. Similarly, if the mind is very clear, just like crystal clear water, then you can easily perceive you have wonderful qualities of loving kindness, compassion, gratitude, humbleness, and um, being reverential, contentment, all those great qualities will come. They will, they will sprout from your heart. So, Shati and Panya. Then the next step is Panya. That calm mind, the peaceful mind can lead you to wisdom. And when there is wisdom, 
then you can realize the truth. Sometimes we say we don't realize the truth. Is that the truth is so complex, so complicated. Every day the truth is right there in front of us. Our life itself, if you take your own life, you can see the truth. The moment you get up till you retire, if you take one day as your analysis, you analyze one day and you can see the truth right there. The truth of suffering, the causes of suffering and the causes of happiness. And the suggestion of suffering and suggestion of happiness. And how do you follow that path right there in front of you, the Eightfold Path? Just now I mentioned that Eightfold Path to you, Sila Virtuous Kanda, starting with your five precepts. Keep that five precepts. These five precepts really, really can help you like anything. They are the causes and conditions for your happiness. They are the real protections in your life situations. People think that these precepts are just kind of rituals. They are not. They are the ways and means to happy life. A secret of happiness. Secret of growing in goodness. And metta. I have mentioned you actually five qualities already. Whenever you have opportunity, you practice generosity, like in any ways, any forms. Practice more and more goodness. Practice virtues in your own life. And then you spend time for meditation. Cultivate mindfulness. And then the wisdom. Wisdom will come on its own accord. You don't have to put forth effort for wisdom. You may say that, how do I become wise? <laughs> you have to build up that conditions. You have to put forth your efforts. You have to build up the, your mind in such a way that you can get that wisdom. Then for our life, family life, you see, we need metta. We need loving kindness. Right? Loving kindness means through your speech, through your actions, through your mind. Just like you wish, you say, may I be happy and well. So also all beings, your family members, your relatives, your near and dear one, everybody, they need happiness. But when you are behaving uh, in such a way that you neither harm to yourself, not harm to your family members. That means you are practicing metta. You say, my parents and family members be healthy and peaceful. Or may they have uh, good health. May they grow in dhamma. May they progress in their life. So all these positive thoughts, when you radiate within in your family circle, this action will translate and this uh, mental thoughts will translate into your actions. And the time will come that you feel so happy in the family because you are radiating that happiness in your actions and speech. You never commit anything, any unwholesome, unwanted things. You will not be a burden to your family. You are not creating problems all the time. You will support them. You will help them. And that is called a true love. Right? Not just wishing that may so, so and so be happy and well, but your action is different altogether. We wish, like you are meditating, but you think, may I be happy, may my family be happy and peaceful, you know, may they be well, may they never meet with sufferings, but you create a lot of suffering for them in the family. <laughs> so there is a contradiction. When you think like that, your action it should synchronize, it go with your thoughts. But this practice is such a wonderful practice. It will help you to realize that what you think is not just a thought, it has a power. Our thought has tremendous power and thoughts will naturally will change your own actions. You realize slowly. So practice that loving kindness often in your surroundings, 
in your families, in your friends, among the friends, you see, in your neighborhood, then you will have really, a, you will feel all the time connected with the people. And then compassion, kindness, to be kind to yourself and to kind. Compassion is a little bit different from metta. In metta, you wish others' well-being and happiness. But compassion, you try to remove their suffering. You remove their suffering. When you see the suffering, then you push yourself, go there and try to um, remove that person's suffering in whatever possible way. When somebody needs you, you go out to them and help him. Sometimes we want happiness, but when we see our mother needs us, or father needs us, or teacher want that children to be kind, but the children will behave in another way. They will never go to the parents. Right? So, kindness is another um, wonderful virtues we have to cultivate in our daily life. So, today we learn a few good qualities which can make our new, new year very peaceful, meaningful, and successful new year. Now, this Dharma practice which you are learning here, if you really implement and inculcate in your daily life, now Dharma has to be seen and realized in one's own life. However, we learn but it has to be actualized by a person who is doing it, then that becomes your own experience. Once you're, you're, you know and realize the Dhamma, you'll be so strong. Your sadha will be very strong. And, and the seal of practice becomes so natural. And you don't have to find time for meditation. Every moment you are meditating. Because every moment you are in the present moment. You are developing that present moment awareness. And whatever things comes, you see through reality. You don't see through, uh, through your intellects or uh, through anything. You have to use your wisdom there. So whatever happening, you, you know the causes and conditions. You know everything as it is. So this is the path to grow in goodness. This is the path to fulfill our perfections. As I said earlier, when you are, um, the Buddha teaches the Sabha Papa Sakarana. So you might have heard about this message in the Veluvana. The Buddha gave this Ovada to 1250 Arhans at Veluvana monasteries. He says, only once he has said, and that is the essence of the Tipitaka. The whole teachings are there. Not to do evil, right? Not to do unwholesome things. Now you have to know what is wholesome, what is unwholesome. I've explained already. And then to cultivate goodness, how to cultivate goodness, I've told you already. The ways, the means coming here is a way to good, build goodness. You cannot underestimate. Coming here, like last years, you have attended all Sunday programs, all our Dhamma sessions, Buddha Purnima, and many such occasions, you come here and participate in the Dhamma programs. That is the way to grow in goodness, not grow in wealth, in your material wealth. You have enough things outside. But somewhere you have no balance. You don't need only mental progress. You also need spiritual growth so that a human being is complete. Why there is depressions? Why there is problems and enough sufferings? We can see when there is no Dhamma, there is suffering. Buddha says suffering exists. That is how he gives the Dhamma. And people, if they don't follow Dhamma, then suffering will grow and grow more and more. It is very wise thing to have to contemplate. How do I have to make end of the sufferings? No suffering of 
birth and all days, death, we everybody knows it. Everyone knows it. But the simple suffering, you see, sacrifice, give up your sleep and come to the Vihara. No. Right? Get up early. They know that this is not something good. But we are habitually fall into that system. They would want to break that habit. So there is no when there is no Dhamma, there is enough suffering. When there is Dhamma, you reduce your suffering slowly and slowly, one by one. You drop your suffering and empty yourself till you reach to that khanda. When the Buddha said the five aggregates is suffering, wow, how, how deep that aggregates. You first of all, you don't know what is this aggregates, how many kinds of aggregates, how they bring sufferings. We don't know even the simple sufferings which you can see in day-to-day -day life. Or you can name them problems of any kind. Problems or mental disease, physical problems, social problem, any numbers, all those comes under this one term, suffering. So, sabba papasa akarana kusalasa upasampada satchitta paryodapanang etang buddhana sasadang. Now, only doing not to do evil, do good. Also cultivate your mind. Cultivation of mind, purification of mind is most important. In Buddhism, purification of mind is the heart of Buddha's teaching. Then only you realize the Dhamma. That is the teachings of Lord Buddha. You have to remember it on this uh, first day of this year. You remember and contemplate it and try to, as for your strength and might, it may not be perfect, but you keep trying. And like a child who tumble and then he get up again and walk. Even so, you try to do good, give up and let go the, remove your um, negative qualities, the evil things and cultivate your mind. Purification of mind, that is more important. So I will now uh, leave it at this point, and I leave it up to you to take this uh, Dharma message to your own life and practice accordingly. Practice this all this message which I've discussed: Shada, Sila, Dana. Then we have Sati, Samadhi, Panya, and. Metta and Karuna. So with this, I conclude. May you all be well and happy. May the blessings of Triple Gem, blessings of Parabhantiji, surround your life with wisdom and well-being throughout the whole year. May you have a very prosperous uh, in the Dharma and prosperous in your life. Sadhu, 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 sadhu.